How's it going you wonderful people it's Jay and in today's video we're going to be celebrating 15 years of the Nintendo Wii by looking at just how Nintendo created this revolutionary controller. Let's do this. It's absolutely amazing and groundbreaking how Nintendo came up with this magical box of tricks. So much tech packed into a tiny little Wii remote. So in today's video let's have a look and explore the history of the Wii and how it came to be. Nintendo conquered the gaming market with the NES, SNES and Game Boy, a trio of genre defining gaming beasts. We had the birth of Pokemon on the Game Boy back in 1996, incredible adventures on the SNES, the iconic Zelda A Link to the Past and Super Metroid breaking technical boundaries and Mario's 2D adventures dominating the platforming space. Nintendo held the gaming crown for a huge chunk of the 90s. The N64 and GameCube took Nintendo to new 3D heights and created some of the most timeless masterpieces that we've got today. Two very much loved consoles, but sales wise didn't quite hit the mark. Nintendo needed something big, something different to survive in the world of PlayStation and Xbox. Development of the Wii started just after the GameCube launched in 2001, with Nintendo exploring different ideas on how to innovate gaming control where power wasn't everything. Nintendo came up with a revolutionary concept. Three DVD cases stacked together. It didn't play CDs, it didn't play DVDs, it didn't support HD. It was just about playing games and having fun. Nintendo's team wanted a console that would sit alongside a TV, sleek and adaptable in different configurations, and shy away from the kind of toy-like image of the GameCube. According to Nintendo's Ashida, the goal was to strike a balance between designing it as a toy and designing it as a piece of AV equipment. In the end, the console shied away from those chunky consoles of old, the GameCubes, the N64s, and adopted a very small form factor that could squeeze anywhere in the home. So how could Nintendo stand out with a console that was on paper technically underpowered compared to some of their bigger rivals? The answer? The iconic Wii Remote. The controller was a motion controlled magic wand that invited anyone to pick it up. Whether you played games or not, it had a sense of universal appeal, a peculiar yet familiar shape that was instantly understandable whilst watching someone else play something like Wii Sports. To come up with the Wii Remote, Genyo Takeda, the man leading the Wii Vision, already had experience creating different gaming peripherals. Within Nintendo, there were already smaller teams that were given free reign to create a new peripheral and a unique game, Donkey Konga and Dancing Stage Mario Mix as examples. Within these teams, Akio Akita brewed up the motion control for the Wii Remote itself, having already dabbled in motion controls by designing games like Pocket Pikachu and Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Akita felt that the controller should be part of the player and said when playing a game, the nearest thing to the player is the controller. The controller should therefore be regarded as an extension of the player rather than part of the console. Akita felt those who may not have had experience with gaming saw the controller as some deadly enemy, an obstacle to overcome, but when they saw the Nintendo DS where you had a stylus and a touchscreen, it felt simple, intuitive, so Nintendo needed to have something as easy to use in the living room. Part of this was convincing game designers and players that this was a new way to play, a new way of thinking and interacting with games. In an Iwata Asks interview, legendary designer Shigeru Miyamoto recalled that the team had to overcome the hurdle of how to convince users and game designers who had grown accustomed to traditional interfaces. I teamed up with ID people to fight against the people creating the current market, or to challenge them. It was kind of like a battle, in a sense. Nintendo created loads of different prototypes, some resembling a TV remote more so than the final design. The first step was to introduce the pointer, something people will be so familiar with in the living room because pretty much everyone knows how to use a TV remote. So Nintendo kind of adopted that in technology, tried it in a two-handed controller but eventually settled with the one-handed classic remote design. So once Nintendo had settled on this classic remote design, it needed to come up with other ways of controlling games. So for example, the virtual console games, first person shooters for the Western market, different ways of control. So they came up with a little port at the bottom of the remote where you can stick a little adapter in and have extra 
extra ways of control, whether it's a nunchuck or a classic controller or any of the other crazy Wii peripherals, it was a great way of expanding the Wii Remote. What about the name? The controller was originally called the Wii Core internally, but Satoru Iwata insisted it on calling it a Wii Remote, as one of the most fundamental questions behind the Wii development was why do some people use the TV remote all the time, but hesitate to pick up a game controller? So I really insisted that it be called a remote. Nintendo rode on this concept further by introducing channels to the mix, where users could check the weather, have a fortune prediction, leave messages. The Wii had become the family hub at the center of the living room. And the key to the Wii's success had to be the inclusion of Wii Sports to the mix. Familiar games that anyone could pick up and play. Instead of using a control stick for tennis, it was a case of swinging that Wii remote. Boxing saw you literally punch those controllers. Golf and bowling needed a few extra buttons, but ultimately the Wii simplicity made it a hit around the world with over 100 million sold. Beyond Wii Sports, we had the launch of some incredible Wii games like Mario Kart Wii, the Mario Galaxy series, Zelda Skyward Sword, and the new Super Mario Bros games, and much, much more. So there we go, a little brief history of the Nintendo Wii. What were your favourite Wii games? Do you still own a Wii? Let us know with a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more geeky, more gaming, more retro videos, be sure to subscribe. And before we move on to the next video, be sure to check out our exclusive merch, Geeky and Gaming Designs, voted for by you. Links are in the description below. A big thank you for all your support. And there we go, a little history of the Nintendo Wii. So grab that Wii remote, boot up Wii Sports, and let's play. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.